Years ago, when old college friends came to visit, my husband John asked them what the difference was between being married for four years like us and being married for 17 like them. The guy gestured to his beer and said that that conversation was more one for whiskey and late night than it was for a sunny afternoon. I knew he was deflecting, but I've never forgotten the question, wondering, hoping somehow for his answer, for a real answer. And now here I am, here we are, together longer now than that couple then. And what is it like? Sometimes it's warm and comfortable, and sometimes, sometimes I find myself rage cleaning a bathroom. <laughs> and it's not like there are late night state of our relationship conversations over whiskey, primarily because I can't stay awake that late, much less if there's liquor involved. <laughs> the pandemic made marriage even more difficult. It was one thing to be married, but another thing to be together all the damn time. <laughs> it was claustrophobic. We muddled along, keeping our focus on the kids and staying busy as best we could. By summer 2020, though, we needed to get out of the house. We planned a road trip to Sequoia National Park. We figured that was COVID safe enough. We enjoy camping, granted mostly car camping, but because so many people had the same idea that summer, the only campsite John could get for us was up a six mile hike <laughs> to Emerald Lake. That was gonna be tough. But once we were on the trail, I loved it. This was the, the first part of the hike was like a honeymoon. I found my own pace and I enjoyed the sun coming through the tall trees, the wild flowers and birds along the path. And for a while, a young deer even followed me on the trail. It was positively Disney-esque. <laughs> Granted, it wasn't perfect. Our 11-year-old daughter, usually a trail superstar, started off listless and whiny so much so that John ended up carrying her backpack on top of his own. As he loaded up the second pack, John told me he knew someone would have a difficult day, he just didn't know who. <laughs> I later realized that was a half truth. He thought it would be me who had had the <laughs> difficult day. Also in this honeymoon time, our 13-year-old son slipped on wet rocks and there was a still controversial incident in which one child may or may not have stabbed the other child, <laughs> followed by a loud debate between them over whether such action was on purpose or not. <laughs> but none of this killed my vibe. We were out of the house. We were all together. It felt good. After a couple of hours, a woman hiking back the other way told us we were getting close to the watchtower, and after that, the lakes wouldn't be far. We celebrated with our picnic lunch. That was the end of the honeymoon. <laughs> it turned out we weren't almost anywhere, and that woman was a demon from hell filling our <laughs> brains with false hope. The gentle forest line path gave way to solid rock with a significant drop off and no safety railing. My palms are sweaty just thinking about it. You see, I'm terrified of heights. But I wasn't caught completely off guard. The previous evening, John was reading me trail reviews. I noticed when he jumped from one review to the next, I knew he hadn't finished reading me the previous one. <laughs> there was something he wasn't telling me. I looked it up later that night when he was asleep. The review was written by a young couple hiking with their toddler. They commented that there was a steep rock face and they recommended putting small children in their carrying packs or holding their hands to keep them from the edge. 
I felt optimistic after reading this. I knew why John didn't read it to me. He didn't want me to back out of the camping trip. But it seemed to me that if a family lugging a toddler could do this hike, I could do it. Here at this lookout, John and the kids wanted a photo, but I stayed way back. Another, another hiker offered to take a picture of all four of us, but I declined. I was not getting closer to the edge. Naively, I thought this would be as bad as it got. <laughs> I'm okay, I've got this. Unfortunately, the next part of the trail was a tight switchback up a steep path with the valley hundreds of feet below, just two steps to my left. Now I was not okay. I took a deep breath and stared at the trail, putting one foot in front of the other, counting my breaths. John and the kids, who all know I'm afraid of heights, went ahead and left me alone. <laughs> okay, Marion, don't look anywhere else but the trail. One more step, one more step. Remember to breathe. When I caught up to them, I burst into tears sobbing, big tears full of fear and anxiety fueled by lack of sleep and a global pandemic. My kids have seen me cry before, but rarely this kind of crying. They held on to my arms and pulled out the toilet paper they had packed so I could wipe my tears. I finally calmed down enough to start walking again. The kids, relieved that their mama was okay and happy to be on the move again, raced forward around the bend. Then our son came running back at full speed and full of anger. He hissed, I hate you, at John. He had seen the narrow cliff face path waiting us, and he was furious at John for choosing this trail, knowing that I was afraid of heights. He should have been a smidge concerned that I would not do well on a hike like this. I'd already had my crying jag, so I was out of tears and emotionally exhausted. I just stood there paralyzed. At this point, we were too far in to backtrack and we had no place to stay if we did. We had to keep moving forward. But how could I keep moving forward? John quickly changed tactics. I think our son had scared him. He grabbed my hand and calmly told me to look at a particular flower. This flower. I looked at it. Then he told me to look at a pine cone. I looked at it. Do you see it? Yes. Good. Now take a step and look at this root. Okay. Don't look up. Do you see the root? Yes. Now carefully step over the root and look at this rock. Do you see how rough it is? Yes. John held my hand tightly, and I looked at what he pointed out for me. I didn't look anywhere else. I knew when the drop-off was particularly steep because he would remind me not to look up. <laughs> and that's how we moved forward for 15, 20 minutes, step by step, root, rock, flower, crevice, twig. I inched along sideways, facing the cliff's rock wall so that I couldn't see the drop off behind me, even by accident. I did glance to the side once and caught sight of our daughter ahead on the trail, silhouetted by sky. Just an 11 year old, but nothing with nothing but space around her. I quickly looked back down and did not look anywhere but where John directed me again. This was not like me. I am not great with trust. It's not that I've had any dramatic experience with betrayal. It's just that I've always felt like I've had to care for myself and that I don't really trust others to look out for me. It's an issue of control, really. By nature and nurture, I'm a bossy older sister who doesn't trust others to know what to do. All of that was stripped away from me here. I had to trust that the kids would take care of themselves. I had to trust that John would keep holding my hand. I had to trust and look only at what he told me to look at, nothing else. 
I had to trust that John, the same person who had gotten me into this situation, would get me out of it. Are you looking at this change in rock color? Yes. Now look at this yellow leaf. Do you see it? Yes. Now look at this rock as you step over it. OK. Step up here and look at this leaf. Do you see it? Yes. More time passed. We leaned into the rock face so that the traffic jam of hikers behind us could pass on the outside. <laughs> hikers commented to John, giving him advice about me, thinking that I was dehydrated or had altitude sickness. <laughs> I heard them, but I couldn't look at them. I did notice that one of these hikers passing me was wearing flip-flops. That was all I could see of her, and that made me feel even worse. <laughs> Here I was having a nervous breakdown on a hike that people take their toddlers on. <laughs> on a hike that people, perhaps not smart people, wore flip-flops on. What was wrong with me? John took stock of the situation and told me to take off my backpack. Now, he was still carrying our daughter's pack and his pack. I resisted. He couldn't possibly carry three big packs and still help me. We'll leave your pack here and I'll come back for it. I nodded. I had to trust him. I couldn't do anything else. I wiggled out of my pack and carefully stood up not looking anywhere but the rock wall in front of me, and we began again. I have no idea how long this whole process took. It felt like hours, but it could have been just 40 or 50 minutes. Finally, the trail changed, and there were boulders on both sides of the path. Sure, it was still on the side of a mountain with a view off into the valley, but there was a natural barrier between the trail and the void between me and the void. The kids were sitting on one of these boulders waiting for us. I found a safe place to sit while John took off the two packs he was carrying. Then he turned around and went back for my pack. I felt terribly that he had to do that, but I was so relieved that we were past that part of the trail that a euphoria filled my brain. The kids and I joked about how freaked out other hikers must be to see that pack sitting there alone on the trail. <laughs> Rangers would probably be alerted that someone had fallen or maybe jumped. No laughing matter, but it seemed hilarious to me. <laughs> how disappointed those folks would be to know that instead of some sort of life or death drama, it was a middle-aged woman who had lost her mind and her husband helped her through it. John returned with my pack and we loaded up again. This time our daughter put on her own pack without a word. We started forward, my, our son not leaving my side. We still had two more miles to go to get to our campsite. There's another way back, right? I asked John, because I am not doing that again. Yes, but it takes a little longer, he said. I don't care, I said, and I didn't. A little longer didn't seem like a bad thing at all. This hike is as close as I can come to an answer about what it's like to be with someone for 20 years. <laughs> yes. Or at least what it is like for me. It is not an entirely satisfactory answer, but it is my late night whiskey answer. <laughs> Good intentions, careless insensitivities, annoyance and frustration, dedicated support and care, celebrating small victories, one foot in front of the other, up the mountain, and perhaps taking a different, differently difficult path back down again. Marion Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. Marion.